existential foreign threat to the security of the United States. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, okay, I'm sorry. All right, uh, Eli, that's actually going to go to to Matt. I apologize, Matt. Well, it depends what way you're speaking. Are you speaking economic? Are you speaking military? Are you speaking? That's entirely up to you. What do you see as the greatest existential threat, foreign threat, to the security of this country? I see China right now as our biggest threat. I remember getting a briefing when I was in flight school 25 years ago. Um, right now, China, the problem is we, our country, we have politicians who think the next election cycle, the next two years, the next four years. China right now is doing something called the Silk Road Initiative, all right? And they're building high-speed rails, they're building roadways to go in and have uh, to conduct trade with Europe. That's something that's going to displace us. And, and if you haven't realized now, the petrodollar they're working on, uh, working with Russia, they're attempting to have their um, currency backed by gold, and they want to use that to trade in oil. They're trying to displace us. So economically. They are very close to surpassing us, and that's something that we need to realize. We need to look long-term and think long-term for the health of our country, and we're not. By shifting our manufacturing bases overseas, we lose that, and, and we need to stop. And the President's right when he said we need to bring that back. And if we don't have that, like in the recent pandemic, we were actually, there was a chance that we were not going to get uh, antibiotics from China. We had to depend on China for our own medical needs. It's unacceptable, it shouldn't have been allowed to happen, but it's been a slow and steady decline. It needs to be reversed. So that's the biggest threat. Thank you, Bill. Lynn? Thank you. So um, I agree with Matt that China is our major threat right now. Um, and we saw that absolutely, as he said, with the COVID crisis. You know, we know that we've always known that China was out there as a threat when it came to our cybersecurity and our intellectual property. Um, but I feel like we have really four uh, major threats. And so we've got China, and for all the reasons that Matt discussed, I won't rehash those. Um, we also have Russia. You know, Russia's in a geopolitical region where they're able to uh, really wreak havoc on us. And so uh, China is definitely, I mean, Russia is definitely a threat. We've got Iran. Iran's got nuclear capabilities. And, uh, and they are the biggest uh, uh, threat for, from a terrorist perspective. And so terrorism is still out there as much as we like to think we've eradicated it. Uh, we've done a great job. President Trump is the closest we've come and we've got to continue to keep him in office so that he can continue to, to make strides there and end terrorism, and, but Iran is still there. And then we have North Korea. North Korea has a nuclear capability that we have seen can reach the United States. And so we have to continue to keep a watchful eye on those, what I believe are the four uh, major threats to this nation. Getting back to China, though, uh, because I think China is our most immediate threat, and we, uh, you know, we we've been positioning. I'm not giving out any classified information here. When I talk about, um, we've been positioning for a uh, air sea battle in the China Sea against China. Um, they've been shutting down the uh, streams of uh, intercoastal or the waterways there for for. Uh, these 30 days like a things throws up, um, you know, for trade. And so that stops trade back to, you know, within the, those that region and back to our own country. Um, and so uh, for those, you know, I think those are the four. It's a package deal. Thank you, Lynn. Steve? 